Hi everybody, Ryan back here again. Uh, so we just did a couple videos. Uh, I took my fifth wheel off and put it back on, or new fifth wheel, and put it back on. Uh, did a removal and installation. Um, unfortunately, my fault. I didn't really get back into the details as far as uh, why I was replacing it and what was wrong with it. Uh, so we had some questions about that. Uh, so to alleviate those, I figured we'd just do a short video, uh, try to keep it short and sweet here, which usually that never happens. Uh, so I got my old fifth wheel laying down here, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to talk about what was going on with the truck and kind of show you the things that are the issue here. So um, I also didn't explain, you can rebuild the jaws and everything in this, um, but the prices went up. Uh, like I said, the top plate, I paid 900 bucks for the top plate. You can get the jaw kit and all that for $450, $500. Uh, but then you gotta, you gotta clean all this up, you gotta take all this apart, and it's kind of a mess. Um, so, I mean, for another $400, uh, I think it's this, then you got, there's, you'll see when I turn this over, there's springs and all kinds of other stuff down here, pins and the, uh, the handle and all that. Um, so in my opinion, uh, if, if you're going to keep the setup that you have, you're better off this to just change out the whole top plate for the extra 400 bucks or whatever. So, um, so with my truck, what, what I was noticing when I was driving, especially shifting gears, is that every time like when I would shift a gear, I've got this you can feel the whole trailer shifting. There's, there was a lot of slop up here to where it was jerking the truck back and forth. There wasn't a tight fit in these jaws up here with the kingpin on the trailer back there. So, um, so you could actually feel it. Like if you hit the brakes hard, you could feel it where you hit the brakes, then you have, you have force hitting the truck. So there was slop up in here. And then also, like I said, when I'm shifting gears, especially with a heavy, a heavy load, 35, 40, 44,000 pounds, every time you grab a gear, you can feel that, that you know, when you're releasing, when you let, I don't, I don't use the clutch when I shift, you know, I, I, uh, uh, I can't think of the word right now. <laughs> um, I don't use the clutch when I shift, <laughs> long story short. Um, but, uh, you know, so when you let off and you grab a gear and you, when you let off that torque and everything kind of goes back, then, then when you let back on the accelerator, then you have, you can feel it in the truck. And, and, and you'll, if, if, if you have that wear within this, these jaws and this fifth wheel, um, you'll know what I'm talking about. So, um, so, uh, there's, there's a, there's a top plate up here which it's kind of dirty right now, but you can kind of see the outline of it. Um, there's a couple chunks out of this. Um, this should be solid. This is pretty worn, pretty worn down up here. This call, it's a collar, I guess you'd call it right here. Um, that's bolted in right there. So that, that would be part of that jaw kit. Um, so you'll get wear up in here, which this shouldn't, there shouldn't be chunks out of this. This should be an all nice smooth surface. Um, which if you watch the other videos on the top plate before I greased it, you can probably see that that's a nice smooth surface unlike this. Um, so you get wear up here, you'll get wear here on each side, and then you'll get wear down here in the actual jaws. And this is where you're going to get that slot back and forth. Uh, and then you'll get some wear on the top plate as well, which isn't as big of a deal, but this is where you're going to get that jerk in. And then you're going to have that jerk, and like I said, if you've got a heavy load, um, every time you shift gears, that's all going to reverberate down through your drive line, um, you know, your your transmission, your uh, the actual the uh, drive shaft, and into your rear ends. You know, every time that's all going to cause wear back and forth through everything, because that's going to cause you know a, a break in torque basically. So so it's not a good thing. So if you start to notice that, you know in your in in the uh the jaws here in uh on, on your fifth wheel um it's better to replace it because it's, it's going to cause wear with everything else so i'm going to flip this over real quick and i'll show you guys the other thing or things ow 
That's a little heavy. So these are adjustable um, with this sh with this rod right here. When, when as as you get wear, I mean this was worn really bad <laughs> down here. Um, but as you get wear, you can actually tighten this up, you know, to to close the jaws in and adjust it. Um, you can get a little bit out of it, but uh, I mean you actually you can do it. I guess if you backed up onto a trailer. But they actually have a, a, a jaw adjusting or a kingpin, like a mock pink kingpin that actually goes down in there to where you can tighten it up on it and adjust that. Um, so, but uh, yeah, it kind of is what it is. Uh, so there's also springs in here, this one here for the release lever. And this, there's another spring here, it's actually broken. And this is kind of the return for this jaw here. And it's kind of covered up with grease. You can see the end of that. So this one was broken on mine. So like on mine, if I actually tripped it uh, without pulling out of a trailer, it wouldn't it wouldn't come back. That one jaw wouldn't come back. So I'd actually have to like if I tripped the after I had pulled out of a trailer, and if I had uh, tripped it for some reason, I would have to come back in here and um, take a pry bar or something to open it back up because that spring was broken. So. I mean, the time that you replace these springs and all that and the grease line, um, in my opinion, you know, and, and this stuff gets worn up here, it gets rusted out. You got, you got, two, you got a pivot point here, one there, and, and your hand on all that. Uh, you're better off just to replace the whole top plate, in my opinion. Uh, and also, I mean, if you guys watch the other videos, there's two big rubber bushings or neop rubber and neoprene bushings on each side. Um, I know I had a couple guys asked about using anti-seize. Um, anti-seize is for metal on metal, uh, metal on aluminum or whatever. Um, when you're using something like uh, metal on rubber or metal on neoprene, I don't recommend using anti-seize. That's not really what it's made for. Um, I would recommend, you know, like using, um, uh, what's that stuff I use? Uh, like a, a, a lanolin oil, uh, fluid film. Fluid film's a, a good oil for, that's kind of a multi-purpose. Uh, good for rubber and metal and that's actually what they what they send from the factory with this uh, Jost uh, fifth wheel and that's what I I used with it um, you know because it's kind of a multi-surface type of lubricant uh, so I, I wouldn't recommend using like a like an aluminum based anti-seize on, um, on rubber or neoprene because that's not what it, it's made for metal on metal in, in my opinion, or I guess the manufacturer's opinion. Uh, so I, I used what they had, that they, they came, that was put in with the kit, with the, with the uh, pen kit, because I put new pens in it as well. So yeah, there's a lot of moving pieces here. Uh, so yeah, it kind of is what it is. Uh, but yeah, like I said, when, when you notice, like when you're shifting gears, or you're hitting the brakes, or you're accelerating, and you can feel like the trailer moving back there, a hard hitting force, I guess. Um, you've got you've got wear up here in these jaws, or I mean, it, I guess it's possible you could have these bushings up here. There could be a little bit of wear, but mine were still pretty tight. Um, like I said, my my fifth wheel actually wouldn't flex up and down, uh, so I, I don't think there was. I think most of the wear was up in here, which is typical. Um, like I said, you can get a rebuild kit for this, but I mean, the time that you'd have involved and um, for what you get, you're better off just to buy the whole top plate, so in my opinion. So, But uh, that's pretty much it uh, in a nutshell here. So I'm trying to answer, you know, uh, <laughs> as, as many questions as I can in this. But Okay, so that's pretty much it with this. Um, we had a lot of questions about uh, fixed fifth wheel plates and, uh, you know, slidable fifth wheel plates. Um, it's all about preference. I mean, it depends on what you're going to be doing. Um, my truck has a fixed fifth wheel because this this was a JR Shugel truck originally from the uh, original decal that I saw on it. Um, so they pulled a reefer with it. Uh, they were pulling probably, you know, they got the same amount of weight on the front, slung again uh, in front of the fifth wheel, uh, and they're probably pulling. 40,000, 43,000 pound loads, you know, consistently. So 
Um, and they've actually, did, they were, where they have that fifth wheel set, they did a really good job. Um, because like I said, I can be at 44,000 pounds and I'm at just at 12,000 on my, uh, my steer and uh, you know, 34, 34. So they actually have it set really well. So whoever spec'd them out, they did a really good job. Um, but uh, it's nice having a, um, a slidable fifth wheel. Um, if you're gonna buy a new truck um, or if you're looking at trucks, I would recommend getting the sliding fifth wheel um, because if you're looking to upgrade um, for the rails and the slider, you're gonna probably be in about, just for parts, you're probably gonna be about three grand the time that you actually put a slider and all in the rails and all that onto the channels and have it done. I mean, or doing it yourself, you're probably gonna be in about three grand. Um, so like I said, if you're, I, I would try to find something with a slider already on it. Um, but like I said, my truck, I've never had any, tr really no problems being overweight. I mean, there's been a couple of times I've been a few hundred pounds, but you know, with fuel and all that, I can run it down and um, and depending on what state you're in, because not, not every state is 12,000 pounds. So, um, you know, you get out to like Idaho and out west and all that. Some places you might be 14 or 20,000 pounds. So on your front axle. So that's other stuff. I mean, the states that you're running in, it's always good to look at what their, uh, what the laws are for your steer axle in those states to know, because that, that's where this comes into play. Um, because you can move, you can shift the weight from your front axle to your drives um, and get that weight where you need it at with a slider. So what, like I said, my, when a lot of times uh, with heavy loads, I'll actually go in and ask them, I'll, I'll be like, hey, can you set it back a foot or something to keep it kind of back behind um, you know, the threshold of my drives on the trailer to keep it back a little bit. Um, so that's kind of the advantage. But uh, the other thing I know here at Landstar, we have a, a lot of FedEx and LTL accounts where you're gonna pull doubles. Um, if you're gonna pull double trailers, and like for me, I worked at YRC, um, pulled a lot of doubles. I know from my experience, when um, we had a tan, like we usually had single axle trucks with fixed, uh, fixed fifth wheels, um, but all of our tandem axles had sliders on them. And if you're gonna pull with a tandem axle tractor, if you're gonna pull doubles, the jacks or the landing gear are much forward. Um, so you'll, you actually have to have a sliding fifth wheel and you got to slide it all the way back or you're not you're going to tear those landing gear on those uh those uh pup trailers or 20 29 five trailers they're they're forward more they'll actually tear your mud flaps off you get hung up either that or you get hung up in the jacks um so if like i said you're better off to have a sliding fifth wheel um because you you i, I there's very good accounts around here with fedex i can get on the washington pa um, down in North Jackson, Ohio, and all around here um, with those uh, FedEx accounts where I could be pulling those round trips and be like home every other day or something every day, every other day. Um, but I can't do those because I can't slide the fifth wheel all the way back and I'm gonna have trouble with the truck. So um, so yeah, if, if, if you can swing it, get a sliding fifth wheel. Um, but you know, if you don't wanna pull doubles, if you don't have the endorsements, you don't wanna pull doubles, um, as long as the truck's set up all right with a fixed fifth wheel, you'll be all right, so. Um, so that's pretty much it with that. Um, I said, hope I answered all those questions. <laughs> um, if not, leave a comment and we'll try to get back to you as quick as we can and as best as we can. Um, again, thanks for watching. Um, if you're new to the channel, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, hit the bell for the updates so you get all the new updates. Um, give us a thumbs up, as always, if you like the video. Um, and you guys, as you know, on this channel, we're always doing the uh, Landstar stuff, owner operator stuff, truck maintenance stuff, as you're watching now. And, um, and all that good stuff. Um, if you're interested in the farming stuff, which we kind of moved to the, another, the, the, the new channel, um, we'll put a link in the description for that as well. Um, you know, over there we're doing the uh, farm equipment stuff, uh, animal stuff, uh, anything farming related and all that, antique tractors. So uh, if you're interested in that type of stuff, check that out. Um, again, we appreciate all the support, comments, and, uh, and all that. And um, like I said, we'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.